Howdy folks and welcome to The Daily Coin. My name is Rory and as a daily contributor to SGT Report, I've been very honored to speak with a great number of very smart people from around the world. I recently wrote an article for my own website called thedailycoin.org and the name of the article is Breaking Away from the System. And in that article, I ask a, a lot of questions, uh, seeking solutions to the known problems that we all face every day. And I was uh, very pleased and once again, very honored to have Mr. Morgan to reach out to me to offer some answers to the questions and offer a couple of solutions. And what is to follow is a casual conversation that uh, David Morgan and I had, and I hope that you enjoy it. Please don't forget to subscribe and share this video and read the article over at thedailycoin.org. Thank you oh, so much. Oh, my goodness. Well, I take it that you read my article. Yes. Yeah, I did. And I'm very close to Mike Maloney and, uh, you know, James Turk and I go back a long ways as well. So, um, I'll give you the history of the silver, silver debit card. Okay. I can talk, as you know. You got 10 minutes. I'll try to keep it to that. Oh, we, I mean, <laughs> I've got all afternoon, my friend. Okay. I, I'm actually due to, I just finished the report and my wordsmith lady got her part done. So now it's stuff. So anyway, here's the deal. I had the idea <clears throat> and it's not original, but, uh, to have a silver, to have a precious metals backed debit card. And I know this guy named Mark Warsman in Canada really well. Mark used to work with the um, mining houses when he lived when he was a uh, South South African um, citizen, and he got very tight with the the banks, the the mining house banks in London. But anyway, <clears throat> I gave him the idea that hey, we should do a silver backed or precious metals back debit card he loved the idea we worked on it for about two years he finally went to scotia who i'm not that fond of but scotia knew him and said well we'll do it if and only if david will promise to get a thousand signups and we're gonna have a loyalty thing and all this so i said i can't guarantee that there's no way and um so that fell through and then i got a hold of john potts you probably don't know the name but john was really the founder of the delaware depository and i know john mm -hmm. And have been back there and had lunch with them and, you know, it's that kind of, you know, and, and he said, yeah, they've tried it and let him see what he could do. And this, well, anyway, the bottom line is the whole thing fell through after <clears throat> a fair amount of work. So about three years ago, I think I'm speaking here in Spokane at the Silver Summit, which was pretty much my invention along with one other guy. And um, I talk about there'll be a day when you run a debit card, it'll be transparent to the Walmart cashier. And it will debit a certain amount of metal out of your account. And, you know, no one's the wiser except that you are, you know, using real money to pay for your purchase. Well, this guy, Dale Orsman, heard the speech and came flying up to me after. And that was just at the end of the speech. I actually, the, most of the speech was about Utah passing that law that you can use gold and silver, which they don't really need to pass. It's in the Constitution. But anyway, <laughs> they passed it. And I was asked to be there at the signing and all that, which I thought was very kind of the guys that were, you know, pushing this thing to invite me. So I made the speech pretty much about that. And then I went on to say, you know, someday this will happen. And this is how I think it could be implemented in Utah. So this guy, Dale, flies up to me and says, hey, you know, I want to do this, blah, blah. And I said, fine, you know, let's go outside the room. I, you know, the next speaker's coming on stage. So talk to him for maybe 10 minutes and just basically put it out of my mind because I'd gone with a guy that's really tight with the bullion banks and, uh, you know, we couldn't get it to go. So he comes back about, I don't know, just a couple months later and says, I've done it. And I said, done what? He says, I've got a silver debit card. Wow. A and he does. And it's been, and I've got one. Okay. And, um, it's really kind of ingenious. It could be any precious metal to be gold, silver, and um, so there's about there's just a few ways to, to implement it. I mean, one is <clears throat> it's a debit card. That's number one. Number two is that you can drop off the silver or gold with him. You can buy it through him, 
and it's uh, in a safe, you know, depository, which he has access to that's audited every month. But what I like about it <clears throat> is the simplicity of the design, because I didn't know this for a little while, but he has two sides of the card, meaning that you can fund your card with, with fiat or metal or both. So I do both because when I started with them, Silver's in the $30 range, and I delivered him some, and I just tested it for gas and groceries, that kind of thing, just to make sure of it was, you know, worked. And then he said, you know, you're debiting out $30 silver and, you know, it's a 28 or whatever it was. And I said, yeah, I'm just going to take the loss for a little while. Just to chest. He goes, well, you can fund it with the cash. So I just, so what's nice about that is if you're, you know, negative on your silver or gold or whatever, you don't have to run your debit card uh, at a loss, you can just keep using the cash side like it is with any debit card. Yeah. So anyway, I think he's got about 30 people. Um, we hooked up with uh, Perpetual Assets. And when I first started, or I should say I, because it wasn't me. I mean, once Dale um, started a debit card, oh, here comes uh, Rob Gray, comes flying out to Spokane and has to meet with me and, you know, so I meet with him and how does this work? And, you know, I told him how it worked and, uh, without giving away everything up and we audit everything every month and, you know, no one's going to get screwed. And I, you know, so anyway, they've started their own business and they promote this debit card. And so, but Dale has total control of it, which is a good thing. So they just get, I don't even think he pays them a referral fee. I really don't, but he might, I don't know for sure. So it's something slow and building slow, but something that's working and um that's a good thing it's yeah and the thing that's really cool for me is the number one question i get and i know what it is because you know i'm me and whatever i'm trying to be funny and that's well i don't know i like to buy it but how do i sell it it takes care of that problem yes it does you spend it like james turk has always said well how do we you know how do we sell our gold he says you won't sell your gold you'll spend your gold exactly and so this is something that um Perpetual Assets has a sort of an added feature, you might say, when they sell bullion to somebody and they might have that complaint, or even if they don't, they mention that, hey, you know, if you want to take, and we never tell everybody to put, anybody to put, you know, their whole precious metals inventory in our hands, it's not even our hands, in Dale's hands, it's not even Dale, it's a, it's a LLC, but they don't put it in the safe, they put it in a portion of it, you know, which is what I do, I have I don't know what I've got down there, a few hundred ounces. And uh, and what I love about it here is, you know, the doom and gloom side, Rory, is if there's a bank failure and, and everything collapses, your precious metal side is safe. If you have a double account like me, it's one account, but if you have a fiat side and a metal side, your fiat might be lost in the bank closure, but your metal's still there. And, and I would imagine that it's... It, I have to believe that it's in an allocated account. So right. all you yeah. have to do Seg is make yeah. a phone call and say, yep. ship I want it out. My metal. That's right. Exactly. That's that's awesome. I mean, that's great news. I mean, I, I, I kind of figured that, that somebody uh, was out there, had already put into place a, uh, some type of debit card or credit card, you know, yep. some type of uh, face to the metal because there's just, there's too many things that are floating around. Yeah. You know, with Utah and now Arizona, you know, stepping forward and saying, you know, we 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 want to deal in real money, yep. and we're just going to ignore the fact that the Constitution already has it on the books because it's tied to the Federal Reserve Act. They've overridden it with the Federal Reserve Act, so we'll just implement a law here at the state level, and to heck with you guys. You know, I've always made a judge. Well, I have for a long time, and most people don't catch it nowadays. So many people have come on board to the reality. And I, this is a joke, but not a joke. I've said, you know, one of the best things anyone can do is call up their county tax assessor on their property tax and talk to this assessor and say, hey, I'm, I'm really worried. I think I've frauded you. Frauded me? <laughs> yeah, on my property tax bill. Well, what did you do? Well, I wrote this check that you cashed. 
but it's from this private script from this private bank. And I just read the state constitution and the federal constitution. It says, I cannot pay. First of all, is it a debt? Well, it's a debt. Yeah. Well, I can't pay a debt and anything but gold and silver. That's what says the Constitution. And I paid it with this private script from this private bank. And now I think I'm in trouble. What are they going to do? Am I going to jail? <laughs> I'm going to have to try that. <laughs> where should I Where should I deliver my gold and silver to you? <laughs> That's right. Where do I go? Oh, I love that. Isn't yeah, that good? The- that's awesome. <laughs> well, you know, and I'm not saying I was the one that originated o- Oath Keepers at all. I, the Oath Keepers might have been around before I ever made this statement. But Al Corlin, and I don't do Al's radio show much anymore at all. But um, I used to do it fairly often, you know, once every other month or something. And anyway, he called. He loves the politics thing, which I just you know, try to stay away from. But So he's drawing me in and says, well, what's your view on this and that? And I go, Al, look. I am the most pro-government guy you've ever met. He goes, what? I go, yeah, I only asked for one thing. He goes, what's that? I said, well, the one thing I asked for is all political parties, Democrat, Republican, Independent, Libertarian, I don't care, make one up, is they do the one thing that they, they publicly do, and that's to uphold the oath of office. That's all I'm asking. And, you know, wow. So, and not that I'm, you know, that profound a thinker. And, you know, if someone probably has said it before me, I hadn't heard it. Not that someone hadn't, but anyway, it's just, it's gotten so bad. I mean, to think that the, that these characters are really against us. I mean, it's, yes. it's the feds versus everybody else. Exactly to, yeah. And they're and they and, and from my perspective, uh, David is that they are actually drawing a line for all to see. Not just the American citizens, but for people the world over, that you know it is an us against them. That it is the federal government against you, the citizen, and yep. it's. I I I I think that that there's been enough situations to happen close enough together, and it started with Syria last year, when the people stood up and were calling their calling their representatives and saying. We're not going to war. We don't want any more war. And I think that that was one of the the stepping stones for waking up people in mass. And now it's it's culminated just recently with the situation in Bunkerville with you know with Clive and Bundy and that whole thing. And I, and I really think that that has solidified a lot of people's view that government is in fact against us i mean i hope that i'm right in in the awakening process but i these clowns whatever you want to call them that don't represent us anymore i mean i just i don't get it i don't see how i don't see how in the world anybody could could reelect somebody like harry reed or john mccain or lindsey graham or diane feinstein for that well, I, you know, I mean, I'm not, I don't believe in every conspiracy out there, but I don't either. You, there's a few that I, you can, you know, and I want about the voter scam. Who knows? I mean, who knows? You know, you just don't. I mean, but so I, let me ask you this yep. as far as how can we, or what's the, what would be a plan of action to get more people involved in perpetual assets with their silver or with their, uh, metals backed debit cards or the other and what was the other um dale orsman dale orsman yeah and what's the name of his company so it's uh precious metals bullion and vault limited liability company that's what it is okay precious metals bullion and vault because i'd really like to i'm at the point to where we know we know what the problems are we know that the system is in a free fall we also know that our government is completely out of control so the question becomes how do i truly protect myself and my family how do i protect my family the best way and from in my opinion is to step away from it and to not participate in it and the best way to do that is through the use of my currency because i mean rothschild didn't say that 
you know, a couple of hundred years ago about give me control of the money and I care not who makes the laws. I mean, he said that for a reason. Yep. And that's because he understood that he can control everything if he has control of the money, which they do in this country. Yep. The, the criminals are in charge of our money. And the, the only way that I can see is to take control of my money and by getting it away from them, which I, I got out of the, uh, the whole banking scam probably seven years ago now, six years ago, and cleared out my 401k. My wife got very upset about it. And so I, I took everything out, took, you know, paid the penalties, paid the taxes, did, did all that. And guess what? I'm ahead. Mm-hmm. I'm ahead yeah. from where I was. And the one question that I ask people when they say, well, well, why did you do that? I said, because taxes are going to be higher tomorrow than they are today. Yep. So I just won. Yep. Period. And, and if, and if people would, would step back and take a look at that and that's, that's assuming of course that they don't Myra, my IRA <laughs> or my 401k, you know, right. That, because yeah. why else would why else would Obama come out and announce Myra and talk about it if it wasn't a mechanism for confiscation? You know, I, that's that that's what I see. I, I see that as the the first step towards the Treasury taking control of all of that all that money that's sitting out there. Yep. What do you? What are, what are your thoughts on the? On oh, the I was way Myra. ahead of the. Yeah, I agree with you. I was, you know, ahead of the curve. I mean, Jim Plava used to have me on like every week, and that was been you know over a decade ago. But you know, I said, and he, he agreed that you know there'll be a day where no one wants to buy the U.S. bonds, so they'll force these retirement plans, either you're an IRA or your 401k or your defined benefit program or all three or four or five Keo. Roth IRA, it doesn't matter, doesn't matter that you will have to buy, you know, 30% U.S. bond or 50% U.S. bonds or whatever. They'll mandate that in order to keep an IRA account or some retirement plan, you will be required to buy U.S. debt because no one else will to keep the scam going. Well, and I said that about a decade ago. And of course, here we are. They're doing that. That's exactly what they're doing. I mean, and now that it's known that China and all of the other major buyers, uh, Treasury bonds are no longer buying. What's next? Yeah. Put the mechanism in place and start rolling it out. Introduce it to people so that they know that it's out there. And I mean, it's 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 frightening to me. I mean, my wife still believes in the in the system, and she still has a couple of different four hundred one k accounts, and you know, an IRA account, and it's like. Please, I, I beg her all the time, please get it out because they're going to take it. They're yeah. just going to take it. And uh, she's kind of warming up to the idea, but she's not there yet. Mm -hmm. So is there anything that, that, you sure. would, that you could share that would help someone like my wife to better understand? I mean, she's, she's not, she understands that the system is failing and that there are all these massive problems, but she just isn't isn't willing at this point to to let it go. I mean, is there anything that that you could say that would help someone like her? I doubt it. I mean, I'd love to, um, but it presupposes we know the future, which I think we do. But you know, there's a presupposition that can't be proven. And secondly, you know, it's a normalcy bias. I mean, most yes. people, as bad as things are, think that, you know, it's going to return to what it once was or it's going to get better. And, of course, we built, you know, that's false. Yes. But I don't know. Uh, I think you are, are the best one. I mean, of course, she's not going to because you're married. But I thought immediately when you told me your story is that's what we should talk about. It's like, well, what's the penalty? And the penalty is I did it. So let's have a real life experience. You did it and you paid the tax and you paid the penalty and you got out and you're ahead. That's the point to make. It's a real life example. Stories are much more powerful than the hypothetical. So your story is the one that, that would be 
the most powerful to get other people. It's not going to get your wife, but it'll get almost every, <laughs> but it'll get almost everybody else. So, you know, you answered your own question. When you said it, that's the first thing that popped in my mind was this is the best way you can get others to, you know, bite the bullet because there's so many that, you know, run their lives based on, well, I'm going to have to pay a penalty, you know, and I got all this money in there. And it's, you know, especially now with silver under the cost of production. Yes. Uh, if you could get out now, pay the penalty, because you're getting silver at a discount. You're getting it at about a, a 15% discount relative to what the average silver miner has to, you know, pay, you know, yep. in fiat to get an ounce out of the ground and refined. So, and, and gold as well. I mean, and uh, gold as well. That's right. I think that gold is, is pretty much under production cost as well. That's right. They both are. It makes me very happy to hear you say that, uh, David, about my situation because that's how I, I, that's what i know to be true mm -hmm. is that like i said you know six years ago or seven years ago when i did take it out it was it was brutal you know because i'm looking at it going oh my goodness you know i just gave up x number of fiat dollars yep and but now uh the way that it's worked out here it is six years seven years later and i am in fact pretty far ahead mm -hmm. because you know the, the stock market as we all know it that that's just another piece of the ponzi scheme and that whole thing is i don't know i i, I got out of it so i start stop paying any attention to it so mm -hmm. i don't I, I couldn't tell you what's going on except for it it's at a new all-time high again today you know it's like yep. <laughs> okay <laughs> Thanks for the update, but <laughs> uh, it's it's very exciting for me to to have you reach out and say here's what's already out there because that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for answers to those questions. I was hoping to to challenge the readers, you know, to say you know what the problem is. What are you going to do about it? Yeah, and that's that's what we need are solutions. I mean. Like I said, I'm I'm pretty much up to my eyebrows with the uh, doom and gloom. You know, yeah. I need I need answers. Yeah, you know, we know what the questions are. Give let's get let's get on to some solutions here. So to get a hold of Dale Olmstead, what you want to do is send an email to pmb v at hotmail dot com. That is so that email is Papa Mike Bravo dash Victor at hotmail.com, pmb-v at hotmail.com. That is precious metals, bullion, and vault, but it's dash vault at hotmail.com. So that's a way to get a hold of Dale. Tell him you're interested in learning more about the uh, silver, gold, precious metals debit card. He'll be happy to send you some information. Yeah, and I'll put that as a link in the uh, about section below the video and uh, also for uh, perpetual assets as well so that people can, so that we can get to the solutions to getting out of this debt-based criminal uh, system that we are all enslaved to. I mean, yep. I guess we should probably end this. Okay, sounds good. Unless Thanks. you've got anything else. You'd... No, no more insights for today. I think I gave you enough. <laughs> all right. Well, I certainly appreciate it, David. I really, really am very grateful for you reaching out to me. I, I appreciate that more than you can even begin to imagine. You're most welcome. Take All care. All right, buddy. I'll talk to you later.